Hi everybody. Well, today let's have lecture nine. And in lecture nine, we discuss the assembler directives. So I believe everybody already has some idea about the assembler assembler and the directives. And so we have an overview of assembly directives. Then we discuss the defined assembly assembly directives for the 68 HCL. For the directives, what sometimes we call the assembler directives, and sometimes we call the assembly directives, but they're pretty much the same. So before we get to the details about assembler directives, and, and uh, I hope everybody still remember about a single program. So in general, a source code program, like the program that you wrote in the lab or you wrote by itself, and uh, or so in any way, a programmer wrote uh, a source code program. Then in general, this source code program we contains two parts, or we consist of two parts. The first part, the first part is instruction. Okay, okay, that's what we have played a long time. The second part is the directives. Okay, for the instruction, that's the main part. Okay, then that's mainly means the program instructions that we have studied for a long time. That's designed to do the job. The directives is okay, okay, is not a real instruction on the program, but is considered a, an instruction to the assembler. It's to tell assembler to do something, but it's not to tell a CPU to do something because it does not have machine code. So right here, as I, as right here, as we said here, as we said here, okay, as we said here, we go. It tells assembler to do some, to perform certain operations, and define some data and the variables that will be used in the program. So mainly to tell assembler to do some type of job, or it defines some data values or variables that will be used by assemblers. But they, but but however, they don't have a corresponding machine code. So they have they have nothing to do with memory. So they are not saved in memory because they don't have machine code at all. So that's why I remember, well, back to very early, very early of the semester when we discuss the instructions, and I showed you for the for the so-called assembly uh, directives. Okay, they are not listed in the Appendix A table because they are not the real instructions. So assembler directives, they look just like instructions in a program because that's a part of program. Okay, but they only tell assembler to do something. Okay, and they don't have machine code. So they have no machine code. So other than machine code they don't they they have no machine code so so they are not saved in memory so they control the operation of assembler and used by by a programmer in general to what to try to organize our program better to make our program to be more controlled or in a way that we like Given the different assemblers for different uh, microcomputers, okay, the available assembler directives are different. In other words, okay, the different assembler for different microcomputers, they have different set of assembly directives. Cannot say that what all different microcomputers or different assemblers, they have the same set of directives, that's wrong. 
So similar to a program, well, similar to a program, the directive of SWOT can also be written in either uppercase or lowercase. It, that uh, it doesn't matter. So as we say right here, as we say here, we go that either in uppercase or lowercase, it doesn't matter. So like we studied ORG before, ORG before with like this, we can also start writing like, like this, that's fine. Or you can even use a combination, you can even use a combination of a lowercase and uppercase. So as I mentioned, the directives they can either de de control our program or define some data. So the job are different. Depend on the different job. We have two different types of assembler directives. So we have the control directives and data directives. So based on the name, based on the name, control directive, data directive. So a control directive, okay, is mainly designed to name a program. Where sometimes we write a program, we hope to give a name. This name of program is different from you name a file. It's different. We'll talk a little bit more. So a control directive may name a program, and it can also define its starting address in memory from where we can store our machine code of a program during assembly process. So it can name a program, can name a program, can define starting address, can also define the end of the program. So these three are the commonly used the control directives. NAM, ORG, and END. I think, I think for the ORG and END, I think you're already very familiar because we did some exercises and we already wrote a few programs. Okay, so there are many to to define the starting address of memory, where we can st we are we st we start st storing the machine code of, of our program. Ind defines this is the, the end of the program, so everything behind that, everything beyond that, will not be executed. So those those three are pretty much the control objectives. Very few. Now, for the data directives, that define the data used in, in the program, or define a variable. And they also allocate the memory for the defined data. So the defined data, they also allocate the memory location for data. So we have what? We have a few more in comparison to the control directives. We have FCB. Okay. FDB. FCC. EQU. And RMB. Those are the commonly used uh, data directives. They mainly define data and also allocate memory location to store this data. So let's talk about each of them. Start from the control directives. Okay. The NAM right here, the NAM right here, this one is not commonly used. So let's talk a little bit more about ORG and END. But I'm, uh, however, I'm pretty sure our class already very familiar with ORG because when we because we already talked about ORG before. Okay, 
So everybody know all our genes come from a region. A region, ORG, ORG. It's used to set the starting address of a program, of a machine code. Okay, this is what is designed to force a data table or a segment of instructions to start with okay, a certain address. So you tell assembler, when you do assembly process, I want to use storing, I want to use store the machine code starting from this address. So tell the code, tell assembler, tell the assembler, tell the program where to start in memory. Okay. I'm sure everybody already know this. Here I'll give you an example. ORG C000. Then we have FCC, this label, this label. We have FCC, hello world. So after ORG, FCC, hello world. This is also ORG, but this is a uh, data ORG. It defines some variable, defines some data, and also allocates some memory for this data. But here our data is simply simply the text or the characters that we need to store in memory. So in this case, ORG tells CPU, okay, I mean ORG tells assembler when you, when you do assembly, I want you to store my machine code or store my data starting from C000 in memory. So the HEL0 Hello World will be start, will stored in memory starting from C000. Okay. Then if we have another instruction which follows FCC, this, if you have something here, if you have something here, that will store starting from location C00B. Why? Because we store we store H starting from C000. Then E, okay, so each of the character will take one byte. If H stores at C000, E stores at C001, and continue this way. And make sure we have space. Make sure we have space here between O and W. Space also take a also take one byte. So we have in total we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine ten, eleven. Okay, so we have eleven characters. With each of them take one byte. One byte location. So in total, that's going to take eleven. So if you start from zero. They've ended with A. Because the difference between 0 and A is 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 what? Is 10. But we have to include a what? Include A. So that's 11. So after this one, next variable will be C00B. That's where our program pointer responds to. So all these are what? All these are the all these are the text, or we simply call it, they are ASCII characters. Okay, we have 11, including this space right here. Of course, we will talk a little bit more about FCC. Okay. It means many means what, okay? Form constant characters. Okay, means what? We're going to, we're going to reserve or we, we're going to take some part of memory to store those characters inside the double quotes. We have another one. I think this one, everybody is familiar. Here, after ORG, we don't have the data directives. We have instruction. Okay, this is very easy. Load A. This means what? Okay, 
when when assembler try to do assembly process, okay, the machine code of this program stored at C00 should be the machine code for a loader accumulator for this one. Okay, so I think everybody already remember okay, what's the machine code for the LDA. We can check from book. <coughs> EMD, that's pretty easy. Is to end is to, what is is to end of a source program. So it's always put a water, always put it at the end of the program. So it it indicates the logic end of program. So any statement that following the end directives is ignored will not be executed. And how about what uh, now you write a program that what that what you, you haven't typing is about time is it's about time to type in E and D, but somebody knock your door, you go outside and you forgot E and D. But your program is pretty much is is done. The only thing is missing is E and D. Then what happened? In this case Okay, and then when you do assembly, you get a warning message. Okay, the warning message is to is to warn you don't forget ENT next time. But however, the program still will be run, still will be assembled without any problems. Okay, but 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 uh, uh, however, don't forget it. Now here it probably is a good time to what uh, to raise some issues about EMD and ORG. Why well, I mentioned EMD, it it what? So it serves as a flag of the end of your program. So everything beyond the EMD or everything after EMD will be ignored. But then, how about uh, if we go back to ORG? ORG here. And I remember I mentioned a long time ago. For ORG, okay, you can use for multiple times. In other words, what? In a single program, okay, you allow to have a multiple ORG. It depends on your need. Okay, well, probably at the beginning of your program, you need ORG, that, that's for sure. But in the middle of program, you hope an assembler may store the machine code of this, the particular segment of your program into a different location, not a sequential location of your program in memory. Then you can feel free to put a new ORG. Or after a while, you can put another ORG. So that's going to put that's going to put the following part, okay. Of course, the machine code in a in another in in a different segment. So you are allowed to have multiple ORGs in a single program, depends on your need, but you can only allow to have a one EMD. Okay, if you put multiple EMDs only the first one, the program will be only assembled up to the first END, or others will be ignored. So that's pretty much about uh, the control directives. So we will go back to, we we'll come back to revisit NAM when we have, when we have example. But now let's go to our data to, uh, we go to the directives that defined for data. 
I mentioned here the defined data and uh, all the all the allocated on memory. Let's start from last one. Let's start from this one. RMB. RMB come from reserve memory byte. Okay, it's designed to reserves designed to reserve a block of specified a specified number of memory bytes for program use. So we so in our words, what it only defines the uh, what a fixed number or a specified number of memory bytes for program use. So a programmer specified how many memory bytes you hope to reserve. You reserve, okay, but they they are blank. They are empty. You only reserve for future use. When I say for future use, that means for use later in your program. So here we mentioned um, it reserve a block of memory for use in the future. That's something like what? Something like I showed before. Something like a, like a here I should like a, assume now this memory here. Assume now you hope to reserve. You hope to reserve this chunk. Okay, this chunk of memory. You you hope to reserve this chunk of memory for future use. There you can use RMB. But you have to specify how many bytes of memory you need. The number of bytes. Or you you hope to specify this block. Assume now it has four location, or maybe what? Maybe sixteen location. You reserve. If 16, then what you reserve. And you can reserve this number of bytes using what either binary or decimal or hexadecimal. So this parameter is required to specify the number of bytes you have to reserve. Assume now we have this. RMB one zero. This is one zero. Of course, it has that small because we have we have dollar sign here. Of course, if when we convert in, when we convert to a decimal, this is equal equal sixteen. One zero in has that small is equal sixteen in decimal. Something like this. So if you hope to reserve a uh, 16 bytes of memory, then we can run RMB10. But uh, for all of the, all of this location, they're empty. They're reserved, they're blank. So they're all here and there's nothing inside. You reserve in the future you probably put some data there. Here we reserve this block, we also label here TMP if you recall the program format we learned before. Okay. This is what this is we give TMP. We reserve this block, we give a name of the block, it's called TMP. Okay. Now, right here we see we only specify the number of memory locations we hope to reserve. But uh, but uh, where is it? What's 
the numerical, the physical address of this of this 16 bytes is, is not specified. So where should be address? So what's the starting address of this block? That depends on about uh, up to right now, that depends about 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 this. About uh, when we come here we go, when we come here, what's the real address in memory? So it's what well, it reserves the starting from there. So that depends on what's the address adjust before the RMB one zero. Then it's going to reserve a 16 blocks, I mean a 16 bytes of the whole block start from there. So here we simply say this statement alloc this statement allocates one zero bytes, 16 in decimal. Label the TMP for the result block. Now, why we why do we need to label this block? But here, like what, like uh, we saved this block for use. Then, okay, when we write a program, so then what? Then we go ahead and we write a program. Later on, after many lines, if we need how to use this block, then we can easily okay, we simply call this block. By by uh, using the label TMP, we don't have to remember what's the address of the block locates. We only simply call the what? My I give name of the block I reserved. So I now I simply call the name. That's it. The label can later be used to refer to this block of data. So here TMP is label. Now, in general, when we label a seg when we label a segment of program, or when we label a block of data or a block memory we reserve, label cannot be any instruction. It's right here. We use TMP. TMP is neither instruction. Now, the directives. I'll show you we have control directives and the data directives. None of them is called the TMP. Also, we have more than 200 and we have more, more than 200, 200, 200 instructions. None of them is TMP. We have load, load A, load B, store A, store B. We have many others, but none of them what is TMP. So this is only la label. Or oh, something like a, like, a, like a name. The after the after RMB okay, we have FCB. FCB is quite similar to RMB. However, the only difference is FCB, in addition to reserve or block memory location, it also initializes values for this, for this reserved memory 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 locations. <coughs> So it's called a form custom byte. Now, they did, there's one difference, I should say, there's another difference between RMB and FCB is when we use FC, when we use RMB, we have to specify how many memory bytes we need to reserve. But when we come to FCB, there's no need to specify how many memory locations do we need to reserve. Why? Because we already have data. The number of data we specified here already specifies how many memory locations we need to specify. I uh, mean, we need reserve.
And also make sure, okay, then we already specify the real values. That's why it's called a, a constant. So assume now we have to reserve the three bytes of memory locations. Okay, use FCB. And we also hope, okay, the initial values of these three bytes are 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 3. So I only use three values. Then we simply use FCB. This label, this label doesn't matter. This label, so we we can ignore at this time. We use FCB. Then we specify these numbers. Initial our values one 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 two and one three. So we have three values here, and that will automatically we reserve three bytes of memory. So we don't need to specify that, that, that we, need spec uh, we need reserve three bytes. So that's another difference. That's the difference from R and B. R and B here, you see, we specify, but we never initialize the value. We only reserve these bytes, but we never initialize its value. Then we have to use specify three values. Okay. Assembler will automatically we take three bytes of location. So this only byte form a constant byte. So here you see we give we give we give explanation. It reserves three bytes with initial values one one for one byte, one two another byte, one three another byte. Starting from where? Starting from from the memory address up to right now. Assume now we have program here. They come here. This is a program. Up here we go. Up here we go. We have address here. So it will it will reserve okay memory okay three bytes starting from this address where we ended for. All the programs before. In addition, okay, because we have label here. We have ABC here. It's label here. This label. This label is a symbolic name. Of this block, okay. But here is simply if you simply consider APC like a pointer, so it points to the first byte of three bytes of block you we reserved. So we can simply consider like APC here is what is a, a symbolic name like a pointer. It points to there. So something like this. Something like, like like this. Here we go. Here we this this is a let me use different. Yeah, this is a memory. Here we go. Assume now we have three bytes. Start from here. Let me use different color. From here up here, the three bytes. Reserve this one byte, another byte. This has three bytes here. Let me use different. Okay, so then we put a put a value. Okay, so let's put a value here. Right, this is one one. This is one two. This is one three. Then 
Okay, A, B, C like pointer. A, B, C like pointer, points to here. Point here. So now, so we labeled the, the first block as A, B, C. So it works like pointer points to the first location, and it, its value is 1, 1. Then what? Then in the rest of the program, when we use A, B, C, then it will lead us to here, to first location of the block we reserved. But make sure here, when we reserve each byte, so each location can only, only store the one byte. That's why it's called form constant byte. The values here, here we go, the value we put there is constant, it's fixed. Now, in comparison to FCB, we have FDB form the double byte. The form double byte is what? Very similar to FCB. Okay. We, we reserve block. We also fill out its value. The only difference is for the block we reserved, each value we take double bytes. In other words, each numeric value, no matter its size, no matter its single byte or two bytes, it will take two bytes. If the value is only a single byte, then it will make the high byte to be zero, zero, and only fill out the low byte. So we simply say each each argument or or each numerical value we need to fill out take a two the consecutive bytes. Okay, no matter what's the size of the value. Let's take a look at the, the same example as one I show. So a moment ago. We have A, B, C, F, C, B, 1, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 3. So let's simply change F, C, B to F, D, B. F, C, B to F, D, B. So form double bytes, 1, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 3. If you show, if you draw, if I draw the memory location, same as I showed for F, C, B a moment ago. Then we have some we have something like this. Assume that this is a memory here, and our memory. Assume now we start what we start the reserve from here. We have three values here: it's one, 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 two, and one, three. So the first value. Okay, we take the first location. But 1, 1 right here is only a single byte. However, we use FDB. We use double byte. So this 1, 1, we take two bytes. Right here, I'll show you. The 1, 1 is only one byte. So 1, 1, 1, we put here. The byte ahead, the byte ahead of it will be zero zero. Same idea for for the second argument for second value one two. Okay, that be something like this. These two bytes, the next two bytes, will be used will be reserved. Okay, for the value one two. 
Again, one two is only a single byte. The one two will be put here in this location, and zero zero will fill out about this location. Same idea for the last one, one three. We we have this this bytes, one three. So one three will be here, and then this part will be zero zero. So here we have three we have three values, but uh, we have six bytes memory reserved. Six reserved because it's for double byte. So this statement it initializes a six consecutive bytes. Make sure all the bytes that they are consecutive. There, yeah, so this is for first value, this is for second one, and this one for third one. Now, so in general, if you hope to process each data as two bytes, or in general, like what, like when we when, when we do some database processing, okay, no matter what's the value, if you have to consider this value as two bytes, then we should we should use FTP. But if you consider the value is only a single byte, or if the if the number is only a single byte. Then we use F FCB. But uh, if the values were we use FTP, but if the value is only one byte, like here, then what? Okay, the first high order byte is zero zero. So I think that's I think uh, that's that's pretty much that uh, what we prepared for lecture nine. And then in lecture ten, we finish the rest. Of data directives.